Hello and welcome to Dev Cup number, oh, what's got day two even of uh, Dev Cup 2020. <laughs> there we go. Smooth start. Smooth start. You always, <laughs> you've got to start on the, start on the right foot. Um, starting off here, this is slot number two. We have Manchester Manticores versus Sterling. Do they have a second name? Okay, just Sterling then, because I'm not going to pronounce that right. Head ref is going to be RKD. The head ref is signal that everyone is now ready. Looking into this, who have we got? On starting lineup in Manchester, they have their players. On Sterling, they also have other players. There they go. All teams are ready. You'd have a very boring time without me, Claude, I tell you. Claude is going to be snitching today, I hope. Otherwise, he's just uh, they're just wearing the snitch for the love of it. Right, off the start here, we've got a uh, blood possession with Sterling. But Manchester managing to snatch the ball there. I believe that is one of Manchester's mercs. Again, I'm going to call him Michael, just because I can't remember their names. Here we go in. Number 18 there. Um... Passing it over to Fraser, passing it back to number 18, Caitlin. Caitlin taking a, a big hit there from number 18 from Sterling, I believe. But Fergus, they're still holding possession there, narrowly missing a beat. Oh no, it was called, uh, called well. Sterling now with possession of the quaffle. Manchester have claimed bludgeon control. Shari taking point on the bludgeons with Sergio sitting back deep around the hoops. Number 32, Beater is uh, now challenging Sherry for the uh, bludger, letting uh, their Quaffer carrier move in there, being contested by Joey, who manages to push them back, but there was a pass there, pass over to um, Rebecca Norbert, who mi narrowly misses a shot there, running there, Fergus being contested by Norbert, but no one there to really stop them, popping it straight for the hoop, giving them a fresh start of 10-0 to Manchester, within, I believe that's 1 minute 30 within that scope of time. Possibly. You might be able to tell me. A little less than 1 minute 30. Even better than I thought. Wow. I'm blind to uniform. Right, here we go. Rebecca moving up the pitch here nice and slowly. Going with the standard standard attack of the day. Slowly, slowly does it. Slowly, what is it? Slowly, slowly catchy monkey, isn't it? Here we go. Moving up the pitch. They now have... A little bit of a different, okay, generational gap there, I suppose then. Okay, Beater's coming in, making a bubble around Rebecca as Manchester still have bludgeon control. Sherry being contested out there by Sterling's uh, number 14, um, Beater. Managing to get a blood drop, Sergio, but she catches it. Making up a big defence there, they're trying to push through in the chaos, but they've got a bludger straight to it, Manchester blocking them out with a bludger. And forcing a long pass, which ended up being a turnover of boundary. Number six here, um, I think that again is a Merc who is Michael, running down the pitch, nice big speed, lots of speed here, moving it through, trying to push it through, but number 26 getting in the way, but not quite making it enough, and number six, Michael, scoring! Bring the score to 20 nil in favour of Manchester. Manchester preferring a quicker attack than we're seeing in most, uh, most games today. Seems to be doing them well on the breakaways. Rebecca Norbert, keeper, uh, with the quaffle, now just moving out of the keeper zone. Let's see what happens. My prediction for this attack is they're going to walk up slowly, beat her in front of their quaffle player, the other beater's going to make a move on Sherry, and then they're going to throw it a bit long. Any bets if that's going to be the same or going to be different this time? Oh, it's different! The beater's moved in! Good lord, but the beater's now been uh, taken out by Sergio, forcing a pass over that way. Now they've got only long passing options, but beaten out by there by uh, by Sherry. Number six there, picking up Michael, running it through towards the hoops. Running it in, being contested by number 32 there of Sterling, but not quite getting the hands to it. Manchester, number six, Michael, getting it through the hoops there, bringing the score, I believe, to 30 nil in favour of Manchester. I need to clarify if that guy's name is Michael or not. One of them is called Michael, the other one, I think it's Alex. But just for now, we'll go with this. Nice and simple. Here we go. Um, Rebecca Norbert moving up the pitch with Quaffle possession. Again, taking a standard defence there with a beater in front of them. And their second beater currently moving in sideways from the pitch, number 14. I believe they're going to be moving in on Shari again. As Manchester have bludger control. Let's bring this in slightly. <coughs> Rebecca Norbert taking a stance on the right side of the pitch now. This is the first time they move to the right. I believe they're normally favouring the left side of the pitch. Oh, but narrowly avoid... 
being able to dodge that there, uh, but making a pass right into number six's hands, Michael of Manchester, running down the pitch, being contested only there by number 12, but passing off to number 51, I believe also Michael of Manchester, who scores it in, leaving the score at 40-0 in favour of Manchester. Some inspirational words there from Isla, Isla there, uh, giving Sterling some emotional support there. Telling them, I know you've got this, you can do it. Just score more. It's a good, good game plan. For everyone knows, the more you score, the more likely you are to win. If I ever say a lie, it is a well-known fact. In sport, the more points you get, the better you're doing. There we go. Now the bludgers have been cleared out of Manchester, but they still maintain bludger control. But Manchester have taken the quad lot of snatch there. Number 51, Michael, ready down the pitch, deflecting a bludger there, which aimed for the face there. Number 12 getting in the way, but not being able to stop them. Michael scoring it there, bringing the score to 50 0 in favour of Manchester. Quad for possession currently with Rebecca Norman in the keeper zone. Uh, bludgers are still with Manchester. I believe Manchester currently have had about 99.9% .9 bludger control. It's, I mean, roughly, they lost bludger control. The first two minutes, they had control. Are you sure? Oh, oh that, was, that was a bit of a risky play on the beaters there, but there's not been any, uh, any movement from the chasers on that front. Instead, they opted for a big, long throw into space. Um, I mean, granted, Sterling players did manage to pick up the ball briefly there before the beaters got to them, but still, passing to no one never seems to be a good passing option. Uh, running down the pitch. Run, 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 run. A lot faster than we're seeing from most players today with uh, Manchester. They are... They are genuinely running, which is quite nice to see. Number 51, Michael scoring it there. Again, bringing the score up for Manchester, which now puts them at 60-0. 60-0, the score's on the door. What? Maybe, it depends. I, I'm not allowed to drink, so I'll go with this. Right, it looks like Sterling is calling their timeout. They're going for a time check. Sterling timeout. The time is currently 6 minutes 29, which means that Manchester have scored almost a goal per minute of the game. I say almost, I mean it's 60 nils in 6 minutes of the game so far, so technically they have. However, some have been quicker than others. So, got a bit of time now to speculate about things. What do we reckon they're going to be saying in, uh, in uh, Sterling's little group huddle? Beautiful, beautiful words of encouragement there by Ginge. Uh, tactical god there. They need to get the ball through the hoop. I agree. I mean, personally, my preferred method is once their beaters run in and do something to distract the defensive beaters, it's for the chasers to then move. That would be the point where they should probably think, let's let's go forward and try and do this. It's, well, it, who, know, who knows if... I mean, you've been on the pitch for a long time. Yeah, I've been on the pitch a long time. If playing like in bra in inverted commas there, like let's, let's see how that goes. Um, so we've got ten seconds until the uh, brooms up again are uh, going, and here they go. Sterling looking mighty happy with their new plan. It looks like they might have come up with something new with uh, the help of their assistant coaches for the day, um, Isla and I'm not entirely sure who their other coaches, but they're going to they're going to give it their all this time and see how it goes. And brooms are back up. Here we go. Rebecca Norbert. Uh, Rebecca, is it Norbert? Norman. Norman. Rebecca Norman. That makes more sense. Someone right. Rebecca. Rebecca Norman walking down the pitch here with the quaffle. Nice bit of a saunter. Having a lovely little bit of a laugh on the pitch. Not quite sure what happened. They may have heard me mispronounce their name. Sorry. Right. Here they go. And Johnny Lydon is subbed on as a beater. Uh, they are moving up the pitch. I believe aiming towards uh, Emily Navish. Uh, but it doesn't matter because, uh, oh, well, it does kind of matter. The beaters have fought it out in the pitch, and number 12 has managed to regain control for Sterling on the quaffle game, moving it down the pitch, going nice and kind of fastest. Number 32 fumbling the catch there, almost making a perfect sort of like catch to dunk in. Uh, beaters coming in to fight it out. Beaters have now got control. Uh, that's a ball to uh, Joey, who passes it off there to Christine. Number 73 of Manchester, who's running the thing, being contested by Rebecca. But an off brew player comes out, uh, trying to stop them. Uh, number 12, I don't know why there's been no... Uh, 
no call on the on that at all. But um, number twelve uh, getting in the way while off broom. Uh, a lovely jazz hand. A lovely jazz hands. A uh, little. Uh, Oh, number 12's only ever played Quidditch for two days. Now with possession of the quarter, yes, can we can up the pitch. Uh, Rebecca Norman on the shoulder there, but passing off to number 32, who is in central, with um, beta support there from Johnny Lydon. Um, now Manchester have lost Bludger, Bludger control. Um, but again, despite the Bludgers being cleared out of Manchester's uh, defence there, the chase is not really capitalising on it. But there we go, 35, uh, 32 even of Sterling deciding to, uh, deciding to put a bit of effort in there and slamming it through the hoops there. Wonderful. Giving the score 60-10 in favour of Manchester. It's all in it. All in it to play. Fergus there deflecting a bludger, but it goes straight back to Johnny Lydon. Johnny Lydon making an aggress aggressive attack there. Number 32 has just scored, coming back in, trying to do it again. Are oh, they going to make it, passing it back off there? But towards uh, Antonio, one of Manchester's players, Rebecca Norman picking it up now and slowing the game right down. But being a big long pass there to number 12, who just taps on the foot there by Sergio, being picked up there by Caitlin, who, who currently is being pressed there by Rebecca, who number 32 running in, but being blocked out there by Michael, number six of Manchester. <laughs> Here we got Fergus there cradling the ball like a newborn baby. Number 32 finally being cleared out of the, uh, the attack. Here we go, Manchester finally slowed down their attacks. Their fast breaks earlier were what uh, seem to be scoring most of their goals for them, but now they've slowed down and they're being a bit more pensive. Seeming it's, I believe it's because uh, Sterling now have bludgeon possession. Uh, Manchester are being a bit more cautious. It looks like there's going to be a penalty here, a delayed penalty in favour of Manchester. So here we go, brooms down. Let's see what it is. It looks like it might be a back tackle, some people are saying. So let's let's find out. Ginger's worried that the refs are going to tell him off for calling out ref call. Quite rightly. I mean, like to be honest, we should eject you from this uh, this entire escapade, really. It looks like there also might be a little bit of a warning there on a beater for having um, what we what the best call of the game, deceptive fisting there. A little bit of a, uh, you know. It is. It, it does surprise you whenever it happens. It, it's a big eye-opener when someone deceptive fists. But, you know, sometimes it can be fun. Yes, it does. It jerks you open and sort of like makes you think, what what's going on here? Was that a third bludger? Was it not a third bludger? you got to figure it out. It's difficult to do. Now... A yellow card has been given uh, for a back tackle. I believe uh, it... Oh, I'm not entirely sure. Was it a yellow card? I saw a card pop out. There was not a goal. So there was a yellow card, but no one seems to be waddling over here. Um, that's... Well, it's like walking, but with a broom between your legs. It's a waddle. It wasn't a save. It was, it was tactical. I'm, I'm, I'm a goddamn peach. Right. Yes, you are. But there's uh, Pepsi, I believe. Pepsi, not Pepsi Max, just Pepsi. I've been banned from drinking because I'm a technically a volunteer. I I abhor these rules, but as they go, right, we. So number twenty-three, I believe, of Sterling. Number 23 of Sterling, a beater. So it was a beater foul, a back tackle on there. This uh, re means that Manchester will regain bludgeon control. I believe it doesn't mean that they will get quaffle control. It shan't be, shan't be a turnover. So number 23. 23 of uh, Sterling, that's the one. Oh, the quaffle has been turned over as well. Wow, that is, that is some big, big plays. May I ask, number 23, could you take one step backwards for me? Thank you very much. Oh, and a nice big hit there by number 12, but it gets back into the hands of number six, who I'm again going to call Michael, who is running down the pitch, making a big loop, trying to bull out some of the defense of Sterling. Sterling resetting to a very tight formation here. They've almost gone right back to a Norway or a Baylor defense. Almost. Not quite. They're not quite on the hoops there. Number 12 pushing out a little bit, but they have set Rebecca Norman to put up a bit of pressure there with their uh, one remaining beater there, putting pressure there on number six, knocking out. But we have number 12 getting in the way there. Number 32 of Sterling has picked the quaffle up. They are walking down the pitch, killing a little bit of time. Passing off there to number two. Number two looking a little bit confused because they now only have one chaser on the pitch with them as Sterling are subbing all of their line off, it seems. Sterling, again, using their only bludgeon to defend their quaffle. 
as they come down the pitch. Manchester have set up what seems to be a... It's a zone, zonal mark, it seems, for Manchester. Number 32 is now back in the game. Manchester performing a beautiful track there. Sergio Gay behind them and claiming out the bludgeon defence. Going for it. But Sterling, number 12, very well being able to regain bludgeon, uh, Quaffle possession there. Quaffle running it in, but being knocked off room in a tackle there. Sergio Gay back in, knocking out number th uh, 63, who accidentally kicks the ball, which knocks out. But Fergus manages to pick it off and passes it off to Michael of Manchester. Manchester walking down the pitch. The score is currently 60-10 in favour of Manchester. Manchester's beaters being pushed quite far back into their own half now, leaving one bludgeon defence with Sterling. Fergus going for a pass there to Caitlin, who narrowly dodges a beat and passes off to Antonio. Antonio running in, passing it back to number six, Michael, who is now looking for, a, looking for an option to get in, but going for the shot, but being blocked out there by number 12 of Sterling, who um, knocks into the hands of Antonio, who then gets a beat from one of Sterling's beaters. Here we go, walking, walking down the pitch again. Uh, possession currently with Sterling's keeper, number 15, I think. Again, Manchester taking a zonal mark, it seems, uh, retaining bludgeon control. Uh, Sterling using one of their beaters to attempt to get in the way there. There's Fiona on camera. Hello, Fiona. And it looks like Sergio is trying to be out there, but being pushed back by Sterling's beaters, they can't get into the game. Sterling chasing number one, right passing it through, but passes it straight into the hands of Michael, who is now running down the pitch like a gazelle in the wind. There they go, run, 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 a big attempted beat there, but nothing gets to them. Michael's now got two chases in the way, trying to go for it, but makes the shot and passes it through, as well as there being a delayed penalty for Manchester. That puts the score at 70-10 in favour of Manchester, and let's find out who's been naughty. Right, what's going on here? Sterling might be naughty because it was a delayed penalty. Uh, as we see here, Sterling have all their chases in a pre-line pre, pre -line there. Um, perfectly, perfectly lined. The time is currently 12.30, which means that the snitch is going to come on at some point. No, when it's not 12.30, they're still coming on at some point. As I say, technically true. <laughs> he seemed to take a lot of umbrage when you told him it was 12.30 then. Like, fine. <laughs> I think we're going to have to get sort of like a, a time, like someone walking around the picture with like a big clock, I think. Round two. Round two. We'll get Jay in a bikini, I'll be fine. That's what I'm saying. What I'm hearing is it needs to be done in a bikini. What I'm also hearing is that it needs to be out of the way. I've got one somewhere. Well, I have no idea how much of uh, how much you can hear from other people in this stream, or if you could just hear my voice. But I'm hearing some very disturbing things here from the contingency of Chester who've come to watch today. Um, <laughs> they're not here to represent all the opinions of Chester. Okay. I am. All of Chester wants to see Ash in bikini. So we've just been told that was a blue card for number 12 of Sterling for playing on after a beat. As we said before, it is their second day ever of playing Quidditch, so we got to give them a little bit of slack. They are putting in a lot of effort. I mean, to be fair, most of the plays Sterling, uh, Sterling have done today have involved number 12, uh, be it legal or not. But, but as we go, I mean, fair dues. Blue card, that's not the worst thing they can get. So blue card is a technical foul, which... I, is is continuing playing after being knocked out like a technical foul? No. I didn't. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to question the call. As we go, blue card, one of the lowest cards you can get. So you know, not too bad. What is the, the worst card you can get, Sam? The worst card you can get, um, probably my card that I submitted for BQC. <laughs> as Which we go. One? The one of you in a pink dress. Oh, that one was beautiful. Right. <laughs> the worst card you can get, straight red. <laughs> Score is 70-10. Brooms up is about to happen again. And brooms are up. Sterling had possession of the quaffle with their keeper. Uh, I think he's number 15. Maybe. Who knows? 25. 25. I was only 10 off. Right. Uh, moving down the pitch. Uh, Sterling's beaters uh, currently, again, shielding the quaffle carrier. Another beater has just uh, subbed on for Sterling. Manchester having possession of the bludgers. Again, setting up a zonal mark. Um, Fergus being knocked out, but being replaced there by the keeper, number six, Michael. 
having a bit of a bit of bludgeon support there, but the uh, Manchester beaters do seem to be a bit nervous there. But uh, watch out, Sergio seeing the opportunity, running straight in there, missing the beat on number 12 there, unfortunately, who passes it off to number 25, who passes it over, and it's intercepted by Manchester, but Sterling still have it, but Sergio's in there to make a beat. Sergio makes the beat, but at the same time, number 12 of Sterling make a beat. Now the ball is on the ground, no one's picking up. It's madness, I tell you. Now number 33 has it, but they've been put to their own beater, running into a defence, making a pass over there, passes it to number 8. Michael of Manchester. <coughs> there we go. Oh, sorry. Ferguson, number eight of Manchester. Terribly sorry. Now has possession. They're running in. Trying to speed up, but knocked out of the hands by number 30, uh, 25, even of Sterling, who knocks it off pitch. Um, it's returned back to uh, Manchester as uh, Sterling knocked the ball out of boundary. So, Quaffle is back with... Manchester. The score is currently 70-10. Fergus running in but being blocked out there by Abita. Passes it over to Michael who is now being shielded by Fer uh, Sergio. Trying to push their way in. Sergio now being pushed out by an unarmed beater from Sterling. Six passes off to Fergus. Fergus is blocked out by Abita who passes off to Antonio. Antonio is running in. Passes it over to another player who is knocked off the broom with a thrust to the back. Right, here we go. Number 12 picking up the quaffle. Running it through. In they go. Sterling taking up a fast Fast break here, seeing that there's no defence there with Manchester set up, but Fergus pushes it in, trying to block them out there, and Emily Navis passes in, and it's intercepted there by number six, Michael of Manchester. Michael deciding to sub off, passing it to number 77. One of them is. One of them's called Michael. Passing. No, it's. They are the Manchester Michaels. Michael is any Manchester player who is a Merc. Right. Here we go, just to clear that one up. Uh, pass off there to Fergus, number eight. That uh, came from the keeper, who is um, Christine. Fergus doing a lovely little bit of a dance there with... Um, with uh, Norman. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, the pass there got intercepted with a bludger straight to the face. Lovely. Beaters are subbing off. Uh, Sterling subbing off their only armed beater. Rebecca Norman having uh, quaffle possession in the keeper zone. Uh, it looks like the Seekers have been called and subbed on on the beaters for Sterling is Johnny Lydon. And another, and another beater. Here we go. Sterling moving up the pitch nice and slowly again. It looks like Caitlin's going to be uh, coming on first sub as Manchester's uh, Seeker. Johnny Lydon making a little tap on Fergus there, almost losing the bludger. As they go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm not oh, it looks like Sterling is right by the hoop, but taking the bludgeon to the thigh, just stops it. Christine picking up control and running down the pitch. There is only two beaters, uh, two chasers in front of them, but they go for it. They pass it over to uh, number 51, Michael, who passes it back to Fergus, but it's intercepted by Sterling. Caitlin, would you be able to bend down for me? Thank you very much. Here we go. Sterling having come off of possession with Rebecca Norman. Walking down the pitch here, it seems that they have no bludgeon control whatsoever, but now Johnny Lydon has found a bludgeon and picked it up in the middle of the pitch. Here they're going, walking down a little bit. Now they're going down the pitch. Cool. As they go, snitch is going on in 30 seconds, meaning seekers will follow in one minute 30 seconds. That's quick math. Right, here we go. Johnny Lydon moving in with beaters there, beating out the bloody defence as they go, but Sherry being able to block it, it seems. Making a beat on Rebecca Norman, who drops it. Now Fergus has picked up the quaffle, running it down. They've got one bludger being... Oh! That was a beautiful shot there by Johnny Lydon, taking out the back of Fergus, who now releases quaffle possession to Clovis, number 11 of Sterling, who... Almost passed it to Rebecca Norman, but decided not to. Oh, it seems Johnny Lydon making a back snatch there on the bludger. And here we go. Number 12 running it down the pitch. An attempted beat, but nothing coming up. Rebecca Norman receiving a pass, passing it over to number 12, but missing it. Being picked up by number 51, Michael of Manchester. Quaffle currently with Manchester. Sterling now taking uh, bludger control. Manchester trying to pick apart the defence here, trying to figure out what they need to do to score. Normally it's put the ball through the hoop. And that is a, that is a direct um, bludger, sort of like, uh, what do you call it, swap there as two beaters hit each other. Clearing out the beater defence a little bit, but they've still got one bludger in play. Uh, Michael seems to have just dodged a beat there, being in the right position to receive a, uh, receive a throw from there. 
Here go the Seekers in five, four, three. That was a score by Michael, number eight of Manchester. Number six, number six of Manchester. Michael bringing the score up to 80 nil. Seekers are now on pitch with um, Sterling defensive seeking. You know, it's a wise choice to not catch yourself out of a game, I suppose. Uh, they are currently only 70 points down. Still lots to play for. Rebecca Norman moving it down the pitch. Again, we've got Claude seeking. I remember yesterday with uh, Manchester, they almost, uh, Claude almost made it for the entire four, uh, 45 minutes of the game. They're only one minute off. That was a big pump there by number 12, which has left the ball going off of bounds, which gives the quaffle possession back to Manchester. Manchester number six reclaiming it. Number six, Michael, has picked it up and is coming back into the pitch, passing it off to number 51. Michael, who is now running it well, yeah, jogging. I'm gonna go with a jog. Now it's a canter. Now it's a walk. And there we go, passing it over there to number eight, uh, number six even, Michael, who's just decided to run it in with no one really there, but number twelve getting the hand up there to block that goal. Uh, Rebecca Norman reclaiming possession there on the quaffle in um, in the keeper zone. Now out of the keeper zone. It's like hokey cokey here now. There we go. Moving down the pitch. Not a lot's happening on the uh, snitch game as Manchester are being blocked out very, very well by number 32 there, um, seeking for Sterling. Just really stopping Manchester from really being able to do anything here. Number two of Sterling being opposed there by uh, Michael, number 51 of Manchester, passing it back to Rebecca Norman. Rebecca Norman trying to see if there's an opening here. Uh, the beaters are trying to force a little bit of play here by knocking out Manchester's beaters. They're doing a lot of passing around the hoops, which is going well. Unfortunately, it has been intercepted by number six of Manchester, Michael, who is now in possession of the quaffle and running down the pitch. Uh, Bludger possession currently with uh, Sterling, I believe. Oh no, wait, bludger possession is with Manchester. We are now getting a little bit of hail. Let's move the camera backwards a little bit. I don't want to get my hair wet. Here we go. And that seems like that might have been a goal. That was the sound of a goal, right? Yeah. Goal. That was a goal for Manchester, which... It was beautiful. Uh, it was Michael, I believe 50... Was it the one in the green handbag or the wet handbag? I saw hands go in the air. Okay, we, we're not quite sure who scored that, but Manchester did. So the score is currently 90-10. And 90-10 to Manchester. Let's just wipe the lens. Claude on a chair. Claude on a chair. Claude currently bored. Right, here we go. Here we go. Manchester back on the quaffle game. I think they're trying to stretch the... I believe Manchester aren't using their beaters on the uh, snitch because yesterday they had a lot of trouble trying to catch Claude, so they might just be trying to to up the uh, up the difference between them and Sterling so that they can get some alone time with Claude and not have to worry too much. Here we go, number six passing it over there to number 51, both of them, Michael. There we go. Manchester still in with a goal, passing over to, Man uh, to Michael, who makes a throw over it. It goes through, however, they were beaten before there by number 14. Number 14 of Sterling, doing a lot of work there to stop that play. Well done on that. They saved that goal there. Right, the rain has stopped, so I'm going to move back out a little bit so I can get the full pitch. Here we go. We can get a nice zoom in of Claude Bendigo over there. There we go, just for the fans. And let's pull it back out. Right, here we go. Number 12 currently with Quaffle possession for Sterling. Sterling, again, taking a very slow approach, but they've got a beater running in from the back here. Number 12, who's going to go straight for Sherry. He's going to go try and go for a tackle there and being able to take the ball off, uh, the bludger off Sherry, leaving Manchester with only one bludger control in defence, but it's Sergio, who is beating out. And that was caught by... Oh! Snatched out, snatched out of the hands of uh, Antonia. I believe that was number 25 of Sterling, just popping it in around the hoops there. Well done, number 25. That brings the score to 90-20 in favour of Manchester. Oh my God, it's heating up. <laughs> Where are we going? Right, here we go. Possession currently with number 51 of Manchester, who is Michael. Oh no, sorry, number six oh, 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 of Manchester. Oh, Michael, here we go. It looks like there is a bit of play on the Seeker game. Let's, let's give you this for a little bit while they got it going. Here we go. So that is, that is Manchester player. Oh, well, it's now blocked by Ricks. So let's move that away. Looks like there has been, it has been called good. So 
go a little bit, a little bit of a controversy here, it seems. Um, so uh, a hoop was falling. Some refs called it bad, but the head ref called it good. As uh, Manchester, the seeker has now been put onto first handicap. Not looking too impressed, seeming as they've not been able to use their other hand yet. <laughs> Seeing how low they can go there. Sterling currently pushing down the pitch here, trying to trying to use Johnny Lydon to get in the way of the beaters there. Again going for again for over Sherry, but there's been a turnover of the quarrel as number 51, Michael, gets through making a lovely, a lovely fake pass there, straight past 21, bringing the score to uh, 110. 220 in favour of Manchester. Quavel has been returned to Rebecca Norman uh, in the keeper zone. Little shrug there, they, don't, they know what they're doing. Right, moving down the pitch here, Rebecca Norman taking it again, nice and slow, slow and steady, I believe. I'm not sure how big the squad of, um, of Sterling is today. Uh, I'm not sure if they're trying to... Cons they've, got subs, yeah. they've got four subs, so it may be a case of um, they're, trying to, they're trying to conserve their energy here by not running when they get on the attack. Pass back there to Rebecca Norman. Rebecca Norman again trying to pick again, pick apart the defence, figuring out where they need to be, what's happening, who they can break in. Sergio has now been uh, now been surrounded by beaters, but not being able to remove them of the bludger. The bludgers have now moved in on the attack, which gives number 51 an intercept there as they're running down the pitch. No one's even on broom to stop them, popping it straight in there. Number 51, Michael of Manchester, getting another goal. I believe that brings their total up to four, personally, I believe, which brings the score to 120 for Manchester, 20 for the other team. Sterling, that's the one. Okay. Right, here we go. Rebecca Norman. Sam just said it was one of the Michaels. <laughs> With, it was number 51, Michael. What is the game time? Uh, 24.56. Game time is currently 24.56. And here we go. We now have Rebecca Norman again, slowly walking up the pitch towards the goals with bludgeon control with Manchester. It looks like Sterling are going to try and pick out Sergio again to try and remove that very fast little fast little beater. Number 51 just being beat out but there, but Rebecca Norman also being beaten out. Here comes another chaser that I'm going to say number 11, Clovis of Sterling, picking up possession just before it rolled out of bounds, saving them. Claude has decided to come closer to the camera here. I think they're trying to get in picture. Not a lot for them to do so far. The snitch not really having a lot to do in this game. Pass back there to Rebecca Norman with the quaffle. Rebecca, again trying to pull out the uh, pull out a bit of the Manchester defence while the hello while the beaters for Sterling are trying to pick pick up on I believe Sergio again. They're going to try and force them into force them into uh, making a play there to lose their ball. Manchester have been able to regain quaffle possession, I believe. But Sergio losing their uh, losing their bludger, which leaves uh, Sterling now in possession of uh, bludger possession. No, Manchester regained bludger possession through a lovely beat there by um, Shari, I believe. Um, it was a big pass over there to number uh, 25, but not quite making it. Number 51 picking up the ball. Michael was about to run into it, but being blocked out there by Johnny Lydon, who has a bludger in the way, deciding very smartly probably not to run into a beater. <laughs> Manchester now slowing it down, knowing that they're a good 100 points up. Passing it off there to number six, Michael, who is now aiming up, passing it over there to number 51, Michael, who fumbled the ball, but still in possession there, being chased out, but not quite far enough by the, I'm not quite sure what they did, but they bounced off the knee there of number 25 and tried to force it through, trying to use pure muscle here, but it's not going to work because there's a lot of people lying on top of them. Um, it's never a good good way to stand up when there are people on top of you. Right, Quaffle is now with Rebecca Norman. Back in there. Manchester Seeker looks like they're actually doing something here. Claude has time not to be bored. Let's see what's going. Um, the Seeker for Sterling is currently meandering up towards the snitch there. Not really, not really too bothered, I think. I, there we go, they're in the middle there. Let's get back onto the Quaffle. Here we go. Right, Quaffle currently again with Rebecca Norman. Walking down the pitch, Sergio trying to trap them there. It looks like Shari very, very, very well there. Oh no, she did not quite beat out both the beaters or defend herself. Therefore, there's been a bludge turnover. Sterling now have possession of the bludgers, but Manchester have possession of the quaffle. It looks like there's going to be a turnover of bludgers there as Manchester have now taken it. Sergio and Shari working together there very nicely to get bludge control back. 
beating up one of the Sterling beaters. Uh, beater now moving in for Sterling to try and press on the on the attack there, making a good hit there on the foot of uh, foot of Fergus. There it looks like number six is running in. They're not quite sure if they're going to make it, and they've made it in number six. Michael for Manchester, a lot of ducking and diving there, avoiding a bludger and avoiding two tackles, pops it in, bringing the score to 130 to 20 in favour of Manchester, 130 to 20, 130 to 20, 130 to 20, there we go, the score, the, t the score table has now been updated, uh, there we go. Rebecca Norman, again, walking down the pitch with the quaffle, uh, being shielded very closely by a beater, who, an interesting technique with uh, their way of throwing that. I believe that was almost like a, um, oh, almost like a, um, what do they call it? A netball pass. Um, but as they go, uh, Sherry is just clearing out um, the passing options there, which has left, left um, Sterling without a lot of options. So very much Manchester literally just took the ball off them there. Really? Here we go. They're coming back in. Bludger control is back with Manchester. Sterling having a high set. Uh, Bludger again with Rebecca Norman taking point. It looks like on the snitch, um, on the snitch, Manchester are getting a bit of free time here. A bit of passing play between Fergus and Michael, number six, in the centre. There we go. Michael running it. Uh, sorry, Fergus running it through. Passing over there, but not quite getting to the hands of their passing option. They could probably have tried to throw out the hoop, but it's a team sport, so you got to pass it about. Yes. Passing is the bread and butter of Quidditch. Here we go. Uh, Quaffle is currently in possession of Sterling, not with the keeper. Rebecca this time taking a bit of a further high point up the pitch. Uh, trying to think of anything to say now. Right, here we go. Just walking down the pitch again. Taking a bludger in front of the quaffle to provide a little bit of defence here. Oh wait, no, the bludger has moved away from the quaffle. It looks like they're going to try and pick on Sherry to try and get rid of a bit of bludger control on Manchester to force a little bit of a force a little bit of a play. Big pass over there to Rebecca Norman. It looks like the Manchester beaters have been able to repel the um, repel the attack there from from Sheffield uh, from um, Sterling even. But it looks like Sterling have. Uh, done it they have done a little bit of a naughty i think that was an out of bounds call was it yes it was sterling out of bounds which is a turnover to manchester i believe on the quaffle game sterling have the quaffle oh hang on so sterling beater tackle from behind a very very naughty boy right this is number what's your number 32 number 32 racketoni all right, okay. Cool. I'm just going to say number 32. Right. Marcus. Oh, cool. Number 32, Marcus. I have a name to a face. Good. Here we go. Number 32, Marcus. Back tackle. It's now in the subs box for being a very naughty beater. Manchester currently having bludgeon control and quaffle control. No one really there to stop Michael there. Michael running it through and just popping it in. Number six, Michael scoring for Manchester, leaving the score at 140. Leaving the score at 140 to 20. There we go. Rebecca Norman are having quaffle possession in the keeper zone. It looks like Manchester have a bit of a bit of free time with the snitch here. Claude on one arm, already on their second handicap, I believe. Passing it in. And Rebecca Norman passing the halfway line with the hoop, uh, with the quaffle even. Passing it over to number 12. Number 12 walking it towards the hoops. Again, Sterling conserving their energy. But Sherry's coming to block that off and Antonio's running to get the quaffle. Antonio picking up the quaffle, running it down, passing it over to number 50, uh, to number six, Michael, who passes it to a beater. But it's been picked up and passed over to Fergus. Fergus running down the pitch now. Number eight trying to pass through the defence there, passing it off there, but not quite make it. And now Fergus passing to themselves, it seems, as they pick up the quaffle. Quaffle's still in play there for Manchester. Manchester's running it in, but a beater comes in. They got through the hoop. A beater got to them first. Antonio's still in play, but it's been perked up by number six, who oh. For a shot, missed it, but again has passed the ball to themselves and kept it just in the boundary. No, it's gone outside a boundary, which is a turnover for number 58 of uh, Sterling, Rebecca Norman. And here they come, nice and steady, keeping the game nice and calm, nice and lovely, nice and quiet. Oh shit, there's an actual mic.
Yeah, there. Yeah, that's why I'm calling them Michael. One of them's called Michael, the other one's not. And it's like trying to figure out which one's telling a lie and which one's not. Don't tell me, it ruins it. Do not tell me which one's which. Here we go, Rebecca moving up the pitch nice and slowly. As we're going down, it looks like um, Sterling are again going to try and send their beaters in quick to disrupt the Manchester double beater defence at the moment. Manchester again taking a zonal defence here, it seems. Uh, Sergio being the one who they picked to go after. Sergio dodging the beat and keeping their, keeping their feet, which leaves Manchester free to do stuff with the bludgers, but they did not do anything with the bludgers. Now it looks like Emily is running up to try and cause a bit of mayhem there on the passing game. Uh, Antonio getting a bit a bit close, uh, close for comfort there. But number 12 there for Sterling, passing it through the hoops, leaving the score at 140 to 30. It looks like there's a broom down, but someone has not heard it as he as he runs towards the hoops. There they go, and someone someone ran all the way back to their hoops. Right, this is going to be a stoppage, I believe, for an over-the-shoulder back neck contact. So that's a, that's a good three-way. Let's see if they let's see if they get a warning, a yellow, or maybe a red. Oh, are you the first data? Oh my God! Right. Let's hope no one gets injured. <laughs> right, here we go. Not that round. <laughs> right, here we go. The sun's come out to play. Let's turn the right ISO down a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. We got a cameo there from number blue. That's a yellow card there for Antonio for um, from Manchester for a back contact or over the neck. Um, and that leaves the well. That leaves the score still at 140. 30, uh, assuming as the goal was scored after the foul, that negates the card. Therefore, Antonio gets to stay on pitch, though she has been very, very naughty. Right, here we go. Quaffle returns to Manchester's keeper. Bludgey control currently with... Well, no one at the moment, seeming as they're having to run for it on the pitch. Um, Sterling throwing their bludger back there to try and put up a defence. Manchester not really capitalising on the no bludger situation that was caused. Uh, Manchester haven't noticed that, um, that Sterling didn't have any bludgers, it seems. So they didn't go for any type of attack. They are just walking down the pitch. That time would have been a good time to have tried to force through another goal. But instead, a bludger gets in there. Um, what's going on? Number 32, uh, Marco of... Um, of, um, of Sterling uh, beating out the Quaffle Carrier, but getting in the way of their own, getting in the way of their own beater. It looks like there may have been a little bit of a, a little bit of delayed throwing there from uh, Manchester's beater as they got beaten through the ball, but it's not been called by the refs. Uh, Quaffle possession is currently way off pitch, so let's have a look over here. Is anything happening? Nothing's happening over here. All right, let's go back to the Quaffle. Quaffle currently with um, I. Claxon or something? I can't remember the name of him on the back of that one. But um, coming down the pitch here with the quaffle. Just going for a little bit. Claude is looking ever more bored as a snitch here. Again. There's not... No, the, the snitch isn't down. They're just not doing anything. Right, here we go. Let's come back over this way. What's the time at the moment? Thank you. 34 minutes. That means we've got about 11 minutes until the game stops. Here we go, number 12 having possession there, passing it off to the wing on the side, passing it back to number 12 of Sterling who takes a beat to the grind, but not moving. Emily Nevelish getting beaten there on the back there, which leaves Manchester currently with one contested bludger and one on the floor. Here we go, let's see what Sterling's going to do this time. It looks like Sterling have gone out of bounds. Uh, they chose the time that they had no bludger, no bludgers defending Manchester's hoops to take the ball way out of bounds. Uh, being a turnover here for Manchester. Uh, with Quaffle. Uh, Sterling have been able to take the uh, bludger control from Manchester entirely now. Manchester having one bludger, Sterling having two. That's generally how it happens. Right, here we go. We've got Christine running down the pitch, passing it over there to Antonio. Antonio passing it over to number 57, Michael, who passes it, no, does not pass it, puts it through themselves, bringing the score up to 150 to 30. Scored there by number 51, Michael for Manchester. Fergus has been subbed on as uh, Manchester's... Oh, hello. what's going on over there? They're having a little bit of a hug here. A little bit on the boff there. There we go. Lovely way of doing it. Here we go. Fergus has got some alone time with Claude. Hey, Claude on two, uh, three handicaps even. Fergus really pushing it in there to try and get that snitch. They want to end this game nice and quick. They don't want to let it go on to 45 minutes because that is a long game and I can't be bothered standing here for that long. Fergus, please catch that snitch. Here they go. I'm being beaten out. Great. Okay, that was a... That was a bit of excitement there. Let's go back to what's been happening. Right, here we go, Quavo game. 
Manchester, uh, Manchester regaining bludgeon control somehow. I did not see how that happened. Um, I believe it was probably a misthrown hit that someone's picked up. Right, Rebecca Norman being shielded there by Johnny Lydon, a beater who's coming down the pitch to um, help them get close enough to the hoops. It looks like, again, they're going to go for a passing option around the wings. They do seem to favour passing down the right-hand side and then passing straight back. Manchester noticing this and starting to mark them up uh, more firmly that way. Sergio going for a beat there on number 12. Number 12 taking a beat to the knees. Uh, it looks like Rebecca Norman taking, taking a shot there, not really having any support there to do anything else, taking a decision to make the shot there. Unfortunately, just going slightly too high. <gasps> Manchester have the quaffle and bloody control. Oh, it looks like st oh Manchester are trying to catch, but being blocked out there by Johnny Lydon. <laughs> it looks like Claude thought that uh, thought that the snitch ref there might have been another seeker coming in. Uh, snitch coming down. Johnny Lydon moving in on the attack there. There's a pass off there to uh, to Joey, who passes it off to number 51, Michael, who goes in for a shot again and just pushes it straight through. Uh, number 12, de brooming there. Um, that leaves the score 100. 160 to 30 in favour of Manchester. Scored there by number 51, Michael. Rebecca Norman now having quaffle control uh, as a keeper in their own uh, in their own half. Yeah, we. The next handicap is you just smack their knee with an iron pipe. Here we go. Right. Uh, quaffle. Quaffle is with. Quaffle is currently with Sterling. Manchester have bludgeon control again. Manchester setting up a. A zonal defence, it seems here, with Michael oh, taking point. It looks like Johnny Lydon is going to try and knock out um, Sergio here, taking half of the bludgers out of the defence. But it looks like Sergio knocked out Johnny Lydon and cleared out the entire beta lineup from Sterling, which means that Sterling now have a double bludger defence and no bludgers whatsoever to help them. Now Sterling have to bump defence with no bludgers while most of the players are parked out. They pass it over to number 51, Michael, running down the pitch, who passes it. No, not passing off to Joey, deciding to try and run it through. Decides to go for a shot instead of a pass and misses it abominably. Good lord. Right, here we go. Quaffle is being passed back to number 63 of Sterling after that bad miss. Uh, it looks like, oh, here we go. We've got a bit of action on the snitch here as we have Manchester uncontested there with, um, with the snitch. This son is... There we go. Let's turn that down. There we go. Uh, it looks like Manchester about to be contested on the snitch again momentarily. Here they go. Caitlin going for it. Oh, it looks like Sterling might have tried a little bit of a catch there, but chickened out at the last moment. Here we go, Sergio coming in to try and make a beep. Sergio making the beep. We've got Manchester with possession of the goal. Rebecca Norman outpacing him, getting in the way, but not quite good enough. And it looks like number 12 tried, but not making it. Number 51, Michael, scoring for Manchester. Bringing the score up to 170-30 in favour of Manchester. Please, please end it soon. Here we go. We have six minutes until the end of the game. It looks like Sterling has decided to go for the catch. Let's have a look at the seeker game as it's heating up now. Both players are going for it and we're the quaffle game. Uh, there's a little bit of a fumble and uh, they're going slowly again. So let's have a look at the snitch. It looks like one of uh, it looks like Manchester's seeker Caitlin has been debroomed and is running back to the snitch. Uh, the back to the, oh, we have got a goal from Sterling. Sterling scoring the fourth goal of the game. That was was that number twelve. Number 12 scoring for Sterling there, but it looks like Sergio is going to clear out the seeker there, relieving Manchester unopposed as Fergus is subbed on as a uh, as a snitch. Number 51 for number 51 passing it over there to Joey of Manchester. Joey coming off that broom, leaving number th uh, 63 of Sterling picking the quaffle up. Sterling now with possession of the quaffle, bludgeon control with Manchester. Fergus really going for that snitch, getting the hands, just grazing his ball, going for it. It looks like. We've got Sterling back in there, trying to catch Fergus, almost going for it, but first Sterling just getting in the way there, pushing them off. It's, oh, Fergus again, gracing the arse there of the snitch, but not quite making it. Being beaten out there, the one snitch in control of the quaffle. It looks like Sterling, again, they're taking a slow approach up there, but bloody control is still with Manchester, who are pushing Sterling's quaffle game out. Sterling have been cleared out by, by um, number seven. Um, Oh, almost a 90-point snitch grab there by Fergus. Going for a bro, be, uh, 
both seekers really going for it. It looks like the Quaffer has been put out of bounds, which gives Quaffer control back with Manchester. The seekers really, really fighting each other for this now. Both of them going for it. Fergus trying to get over a falling chase, a uh, falling seeker there. Snitches down. While the snitch is down, Fergus or any of the seekers may not move towards the snitch for three seconds. So let's have a look at the Quaffle game as we go. Score is currently 170 to 40 in favour of Manchester. There we go, nice beat there. There's no one in the way. Oh no, there's two bludges in the way of uh, Rebecca Norman, so that's not going to go anywhere. Right, Fergus has caught the snitch. Fergus has grabbed it, jumping round, bending round like a bendy noodle of some kind to get the hand on the ball, pulling it out, ripping it from its Velcro cage. Let's have a look. Is this going to be called good? I could see no problems with this one. If the refs call out something to stop the game, who knows? But we currently have, this time is currently 41 minutes. There are only four minutes left. Either way, whatever happens, the score is currently 170 to 40 in favour of Manchester. If this goes through, that pushes Manchester to 210, which is a big score. Oh my God. Can I have some uh, Hello, can I just have a check oh, it pushes it to 200. Good lord. Okay, my maths is terrible. I do apologise. Let's have a look at the. Let's have a look at the refs. Are the refs discussing anything? It looks like they're having a little sneaky look around to see if Jensen's broken. The catch has been called good. That leads the final score. Uh, 200 to Manchester, 40 to Sterling. Manchester win. 200 to 40. Or Depending on your ass, maybe 210. If my maths is terrible. Thank you very much. This has been Manchester versus Sterling at Dev Cup 2020. I've been Sam Davis and that's that's it. Goodbye.